Now we can look at the plot that you're going to be using in part two of lab eight. And I've got this positions of the planets plot opened up in an image viewer so that I can zoom in a little bit more easily than I can on the web browser. And the first thing I want to talk about is just some colors in case you're colorblind or you're having some difficulties differentiating them. And I'm going to start by zooming in here just so we can see a little bit more carefully. If you're having a hard time seeing the colors, this dot I'm calling orange, blue, green, red. This one over here is purple. The one up here I'm calling pink. Now I gotta scroll a little bit till I start to see some of the other dots. This one over here is brown. This one over here is yellow. I put a black line around it just because the yellow was a little harder to see on the white background. And then I was running out of colors, so this one down here is sort of an aqua or a teal color. Um, doesn't matter which term you use on there, uh, whether you call it a teal or an aqua or even a bluish green, but that's the color for this dot. So if all you needed was some help seeing the colors, go ahead and use those names. Now to talk a little bit about the actual coordinates on this plot. We start with our coordinate of zero and our angle measurement or our longitude goes around. And you'll notice that here it's marked with a dark line every 10 degrees with 90 up on top, 180 on the left side, 270 on the bottom side. In between these dark lines, there's some lighter lines in the outer part of the plot. And because of the number of them, these are actually every two degrees. So it goes from 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So you can have a lot of precision about knowing what the angle is. And if it's halfway between two lines, then say between 12 and 14 would have been 13. These light lines are only in the outer part of the plot. When you get into this region of the plot, it's got the every 10 degrees, but not the lines in between them because they would be too close together. You can still estimate if it's somewhere between two lines, say maybe between the 10 and the 20 line. It might be 15 approximately. You can figure those angles out. When we get all the way into the very center, we don't have any of the lines because they would have all been just on top of each other. But if you look at the lines that are sort of closest to each one of these dots, you can kind of imagine where it is on those lines and then trace out those lines to the edge to be able to estimate approximately what angle those are at. Now the R distance on the plot is the circles as that we go out. And the first circle is at, Z, at 1, the center dot is 0. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It continues on out, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You'll notice that the 5 line is darker and the 10 line is darker. We continue on out, all the way out to 15. And after that, they don't have the 1 anymore. It just goes out every five. So whereas here it was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, here it's going to go from 15 directly out to 20. And then zooming out, we can see that it's again, the dark lines are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and the furthest one out is going to be 45. So that's how you would count the distance out. And again, if you're partway between these lines, you might be partly between the 20 and the 25 lines. So you can estimate if it's at 22 or 24 or any other measurement in between. So you'll estimate a little bit, but make sure you know how to count those lines in order to find which dot goes with which set of coordinates. And then once you've determined which dot goes with which set of coordinates, 
you can go back and look at the colors I mentioned and write down those colors for those dots. If you have any questions, let me know.